Hello everybody, John here, and today onto the garage, what we're doing is we're going to change out the brake sensor on the XK8 Purdy to see if that's going to get rid of our traction control and ABS code. Um, but uh, another little task before we do that is I'm just going to raise the Union flag, <laughs> which is uh, a bizarre sounding thing to say. But many of you have noticed and commented on the fact we have a flagpole in our garden and it has a windsock on and said are you in airfield what's going on and the truth of the matter is we live in quite a rural area um, postcodes are quite large there are no house numbers and um, by us they're all house names so um, in order for parcels to be delivered you kind of need a landmark so it's quite easy to say go to the house with a flagpole and the reality is i've got lots of flags i've got a jolly roger a union flag an england flag i've got the lincolnshire flag which we raise now and again i even raise the mclaren flag when we win at the formula one that doesn't go up very often time to get on with the wheel sensor okay so it's the front left that I've established there's an issue with uh, I've got my little uh, cap removing tool from out the boot push on to the, the cover with the slot in it because that's the fake that covers the um, puzzle nut Fit the puzzle nut, spanner. It's good practice to uh, remove the nuts or loosen the nuts using either the uh, wheel wrench provided in the car or a spider like this that has similar leverage. Because if you can't do it at, at your own home, oh, using the sorts of tools you're gonna have when you break down at the side of the road, then obviously you're gonna be in trouble. So uh, it's worth finding out whether or not you can undo them. The bit of masking tape, by the way, is part so it's quick and easy for me to find the right one and part because that won't damage the powder coating on my wheels. Next, I only need the one wheel in the air. So I use a jacking point because I know they're in good condition on my car, there's no issues. And I just use my trolley jack and a very hard rubber plate. We'll be able to have a little look at how the uh, new upgraded EBC discs are bedding in as well. The car has probably done no more than 40 miles of gentle driving and I can't really go out playing and test driving because of the uh, lockdown situation. So they're not fully even bedded in yet. But I'm expecting most of the thermic coating to have been taken off the disc. Might even be a bit of rust because of it's been stood. I think you can see it's mainly cleared up. There's a few areas. Well, you can, only, you can tell where the brake pad's been sat, but other than that, it's just a, a little bit more depth to go before it's completely cleaned up where it's uniform right across the system. And although it's touching the disc, it's not dragging. So I'm very happy with that. Caliper's looking beautiful. Next thing is just to get an axle stand in. I've got no intention of going under the car, but good practice. And it's not gonna take any weight, so I'm gonna just jack the car up far enough to get this 
uh, beneath the suspension link. I'm not going to put much in the way of weight on it, um, but it's just a safety feature. Okay, just as a catch up for anybody who hasn't watched the uh, diagnosing video, we've already identified that there's a fault uh, this side on the sensor, but um, another little check we can do just to help everybody understand. The sensor is here, I've got my multimeter set to ohms. If we connect the probes together, we get zero. If I make contact, ohms being resistance or continuity if you want to what am I checking if I contact the two contacts in the sensor it stays on the one which means open circuit and again if I just put these together no resistance if I take a new sensor here I have one of they that's what they look like that's the um, magnetic element and there's the socket where I've been probing and we use the new one we get 1.07 thousand ohms so big difference and the next one is we didn't get a signal from this back from its little wire up to the top of the car so, should be the work of seconds, but I know that this is stuck. So it's going to take a little while to get the old one out and put this new sensor in place. Three bars on the end, look at the sensor, the wheel, sorry, inside here, which is just a little castellated wheel, and they are magnetic, and they detect the metal going past it because that metal causes a very small current to occur which is signalled up those two wires so these will fail if the magnetism is gone or if they're open circuit inside and this one is open circuit inside by seems of it or at least very damaged terminals next is undo the bolt that holds the thing in sensor in and that's an 8 mil Or it should be. Yep, there we go. Mine's a very early car, and so it has this extra wire attached. Uh, it seems those, as we've quite a few things, were taken off um, probably after the first two years as a bit of a cost down. Various bits of trim, covers. Just niceties really removed. So that's just an earth wire to cut down on electromechanical noise, electrostatics. And then this, in theory, just pulls out that way. But mine's stuck. And we may be in for a bit of battle here. And it may end up with me drilling the thing out. Which is, I suspected this had got a fault because I couldn't remove it just for inspection previously, but I thought I'd give it the benefit of the doubt. That really doesn't want to come. This has been previously soaked in penetrating oil, so I know it's not as simple as do that and that shall pop. Also, of course, it is plastic, so in theory, this isn't going to be corroded in, but reality is they swell. What I'm doing is I'm just putting a very thin chisel behind it. There's a very small area of the sensor that might be on show to me, I can't quite tell, somewhere I'm going to give it a little tap just to see. Well, it's not looking like he wants to come. I'm going to put the chisel down the back of the connector 
there's a flat area on the hub here. See if I can force it out that way. And if the end shear's off, that's fine, because I'll end up uh, drilling this out anyway. Right. Nothing happening there. Try from the bottom. As it bends up that tab. But not looking like right, this is going to come out in one piece. So that's clipped off. And uh, see the leftovers of the terminals, wires, we go through to the magnets. So that's more or less flush. What I'm going to do now is get a drill in there and see if we can free it off. Okay, so that's the new sensor. That's a drill that I'm going to use. Oops. So we're well under the diameter. I mean, hugely under the diameter. Not that this is round. <laughs> um, of the sensor. It just means that I'm going to have plenty of clearance around it. I'm not going to be damaging the casting. You know, there's a bit of metal in there. Basically, the drill is going to stay in the middle of the plastic and not wander towards the metal too much. We've just got to get him started, which might be challenging because of the rough surface. Can't really centre punch it. There we go. And we're in. Now, what I don't want to do is dive all the way through and damage the reluctor wheel, the bit that turns at the back there. So I'll be going a little way, then we'll be uh, putting some tape on this drill. Once I know, we're gonna make some sort of impression. The centre, the deepest part, part of the drilled hole so far, is touching something hard and metallic because it's quite a wide drill. It's struggling, so I'm going to switch to a smaller drill bit. Put some tape on. I'm leaving 5 mil of depth before I come through the other side of the sensor. Really hard. Use some uh, small drills and chain drill it, I think. some hard materials in there. All right, I think the next tool to come out <coughs> is going to be the Dremel. I'm going to just try and mill away the plastic that I can get at easily. So, Dremel, uh, milling a bit on it. Or as close as you get with a Dremel. Now we've at least got the advantage that we can see the three metal plates embedded in the plastic. 
So if I get the new one, oops. There we go. Those three plates. So they're that obviously really hard and snagging drills. So being able to see them means maybe I can work around them a little bit. Awful lot of copper in there. <laughs> really fine copper there. I'm guessing the really hard substance is the core of the magnet. Brittle, which is good for us. Ah, we've got the edge. Finally got a little bit of collapse going on. So Let's try that home. Oops, sorry for knocking the camera. There are some more copper coming out. Very intriguing. If I'd have got this out whole, I think I'd have dissected it just to see how it's wound. But uh, based on this experience, I don't think I'd have done a neat job. Crikey, look at it. Yeah, it's not going to be the steadiest piece of film, boys and girls. I'm sorry, but uh, it's a little bit of a confined space to get me hands and head and light in at the same time as the camera. But there you go. I don't want to put you guys off playing with your sensors by watching this and saying, crikey, struggle with that. They really should unbolt and come out. Uh, my friend Gareth said he's had to drill a few out of various cars on, I think BMWs, you might correct me on that. So this is not unique, but the idea is you take that one bolt out and pull them out. <laughs> Again, this is about mine being an early car and a lot of the parts being original. They've been in there 23 years. And they're reluctant to let go. I think we're there. It's all breaking up. One of the plates has literally come out now, so there shouldn't be much else holding on. So to load more copper. Blimey, it's like it's solid copper. I don't know why they're putting wire in it, it should be billet. Uh. Obviously I'm joking, it's gotta be wire, it's gotta be wound. But <laughs> yep. Just copper after copper after copper. It's obviously expanding as, as I uh, break it. Just keeps on coming. It's ridiculous. It's only what two, three centimeters long by one and a half centimeters diameter. And the amount of copper that's come out is shocking. Right, I think all that's left is the plastic head, which is now, yeah, touching the reluctor. But 
should pop out. Uh, is the end that was facing the wheel sensor. Oh, that is facing the reluctor. And that is all I can show you of that sensor. Time to give everything a good clean out. So, sandpaper rolled up. I've got a rat tail file in my hand, but I'm not going to be filing with it. I'm literally just trying to clean the surface with a lot of crusty corrosion in there. So I'm just scraping, really. So finally we got it out. It shouldn't be that hard. It really shouldn't. So without wanting to give a ABS lesson, um, what we're doing now is we're looking through the hole where the sensor goes at the reluctor wheel and it's just a castellated metal wheel and our sensor is a magnetic metal detector style instrument and it's looking for pulses from those castellations going past and he uses that signal to compare the pulses from all four wheels. If the pulses from one wheel stop and the others don't, it detects that wheel is locked up and works the ABS. And it uses a similar system to work things like traction control, uh, stability control, etc. Just basically comparing wheel speeds. And if one of the sensors is broke as a safety feature, it flashes up all sorts of warnings. Because my sensor obviously took rather a lot of removing, even though I've cleaned the hole up, I'm uh, putting a little bit of copper grease on the plastic housing to make sure it's a little easier if I needed to get it out again. The hole is round, the sensor is sort of lobed rectangular, so it touches up four points and slides in quite a nice fit now. Again, just a quick reminder that if you've got anything later than my car, um, this is a 96, uh, I have the same on a 97, I don't think they went on much longer than that. They don't seem to have this extra wire, so don't fret if yours hasn't got that. It is just sort of an anti-interference, a signal uh, damper. Um, so it's not strictly necessary. You only need to nip the bolts back up, it's only holding the device in place. And then don't forget, after all this work, to reconnect the ABS sensor wire and the little green element on it is a gland uh, it stops the water getting in it's important that it hasn't dropped off because the connector is the wrong way up really it's facing down and water can collect in there Ooh. so test drive time right guys you literally joined me as I was just finished sorting out the brake sensor so I have literally no idea what's going to happen I'm hoping it's fixed, but I don't know that. And if it isn't, you know, you just carry on to the next thing. This car's a hobby. Okay, so keys are in ignition. Ignition on. Uh, in park. Start her up. And brake off. ABS light is on, but no message is on the display, which is probably good because I've had uh, traction control and ABS um, come up on the little text display basically as soon as I started it before I even turned a wheel previously. So something's changed, which is good. I've made an improvement. The ABS light being on, potentially has memorized the fact that last time I drove the car 
of an ABS problem. So maybe it's going to sort itself with a little bit of trundling around. As always, if you're messing with your brakes in any way, always give them a little try before you uh, shoot off anywhere. Obviously, I've not touched anything on the braking surface, but it's a really good idea. <laughs> so just give them a nudge. Okay, I can report the ABS light has already gone off, which is excellent news. I hope the sound's okay. I've got the window open because it's hot and the air conditioning off just to keep things quiet because I wanted to hear if I could hear any um, touching or rubbing noises from the ABS sensor. I didn't think I would, but... Mm. So, unless something goes very wrong in the next few minutes, it feels like ABS and traction control fault fixed. Good news. I do have one other fault that I'm aware of that's developed recently and that is despite I fixed the problem previously I had no chirping sound, no clicking sound from the indicators and it's an artificial clip in these cars. I changed the speaker which is inside the um, steering column and everything was good. Well, it's gone again. Now, I soldered the joint, so it's very unlikely to be the way I fixed it. What it suggests is maybe one of the wires has got pinched, or the wire was already pinched, and I hadn't fixed the problem at all. I just moved things around by changing the speaker. Um, so that's something I'm going to have to reinvestigate. So there's no tick, tick, tick when I put the indicators on. I'm not going to take liberties with... Uh, lock down and go too far or go too mad. I'm certainly not going to do a break with you. But what I do want to do is just find a little bit of loose gravel and provoke the ABS so that I know that that motor kicks back in and doesn't throw any codes. I don't want to go too much off-road, but... I heard the ABS motor run. That's sort of a ticking, whirring sound coming from far left forward. Okay, so I'm on a bit of gravel. Just going to turn the fans off again. Let's just see what happens. Provoked the ABS into action and no fault codes. ASC, auto stability control, I just flashed on my dash, but I think that's use of rather than fault with because nothing stayed. For your interest, the next couple of things that I'd have done if this hadn't solved the problem would be to check the rear wheel um, ABS sensors. As soon as I found the bad one, I, I knew I'd found probably the fault. But uh, obviously two could have gone down at once. The rear ones fail less often than the fronts um, because the movement in the rear suspension is less and has less effect on the link wires. So the wiring tends not to fail so often on the rear, but can do. And if I'd established all the sensors for good or had replaced all the sensors, then I'd be into the ABS ECU. And there is a, I don't want to say it's a common fault because it isn't, but it's a known fault. That's a better expression. It's a known fault where the solder decays over time and leaves a bad joint. And that dry joint. Um, gives a bad supply to it, to the brake ECU, and that will cause all the same sorts of faults as I'm having. So that would be the next thing. And again, it can be fixed at home. 
Um, it sounds scarier than it is. Yeah, good noise from the ABS motor there. Yeah, there, plenty of noise from it. That's all good. Um, but it does mean cutting a hole in your ECU because it's a sort of sealed unit. And then there's two terminals that typically break. It's touching them up with a bit of solder or getting a friend who's a you know better with a soldering iron if you if you don't like that sort of thing, just to improve the joints and you're back again. The very final thing would have been to replace the ABS motor, which isn't really that serviceable to the home user, it sort of comes as a unit, and they can be quite expensive, even secondhand. Uh, UK, I think I could probably get one for about £250 second hand and I'd be £700 to £1,000 new, I would say. So all in all, good result. Oh, the aircon's nice and chilly in this car. Since it got properly evacuated and recharged, it's been icy cool, very nice. Feels nice to be out on the road with Purdy again. Even when you're just pottering around, it's a pleasure to drive. So there we are, Purdy fixed again, yay! So it was the wheel sensor and it was a bit of a pig of a job, but again, not difficult, you just grab patience and enjoy it remember it's a hobby <laughs> tinkering away at it so um one of the next jobs will be getting the click 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 back for the indicators i do want to sort out these vents which are broken like on so many x100s um i do have a way of doing it but again it's just finding the time to do it um i've got a door panel but still a little bit rattly when you slam the door so I know the clips are gone at the back. I've got to sort out that. And other than that, she needs a really, really good valet because she's been living outdoors for a while. She's going to carry on living outdoors for a while. So she deserves a little bit of uh, love and attention. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. If so, please subscribe, please share, and tell your friends to join in. Uh, I look forward to your comments in the area below the video. And we will see you again on To The Garage real soon. See ya.